In this problem, we're told we have some water in a certain tank here, this, uh, this tank A, and we have a, some unknown pressure here that's causing the flow to go through this pipe. There's a gate valve here, flow's going up, changing elevation, and then discharging into tank B. And tank B has some internal pressure here at the surface of 280 kilopascals gauge pressure. So there's some high pressure here that's forcing the water to go through the pipe. And we're told that if the required flow rate is about 1 times 10 to the minus 2 cubic meters per second, what is the required gauge pressure in the tank here? So what is this PA going to be? And we're told a little bit about the geometry here. We're given some elevations, uh, re-entrant inlet, half-closed gate valve, some threaded 90-degree elbows, uh, the pipe diameter, uh, it's made out of commercial steel, and uh, the total length, and then also some information about the exit elevations and such. So this is going to be an, uh, an extended Bernoulli equation problem, clearly, and we're, you know, we're dealing with a pipe flow. So let's go ahead and apply the extended Bernoulli equation from a point 0.1 to a point 0.2, and I'm going to choose my point 0.1 to be at the free surface of the tank here, the reason I'm choosing that free surface is because I know the pressure there is going to be equal to PA, and that's what I'm trying to solve for. In addition, I know the velocity there is going to be roughly equal to zero, and I know its elevation. So I know a lot of information there. And then I'll apply this along a streamline that ultimately works its way to the exit here, and I'm going to apply my point 2 to be right at the outlet there. And the reason I'm choosing that one is because I know the pressure there will be the PB pressure. I know the elevation. And the velocity at the exit of the pipe here will be the same velocity as what we have in the actual pipe because it's, it's right at the exit there. And since I know the volumetric flow rate through the pipe and I know the pipe diameter, I can get the velocity in the pipe. We'll do that in just a moment. I'll show you that in a moment. So let's go ahead, and go ahead and apply the extended Bernoulli equation from points 1 to 2. Let's write it out. So that's our total head at point 2. That'll equal the total head at point 1. I'm just, I'm not going to write out, the three dots here is just that. I'm not going to write it all out just for the sake of time. Then we have our head loss, total head loss between points 1 and 2, and then our total shaft head we're adding in from points 1 to 2. Let's go ahead and write out what we know. And by the way, I recommend following this kind of procedure for these pipe flow problems. Just write out the governing equation, and then let's write out what we know underneath it. So we know P1 is equal to PA. We're trying, that's what we're trying to find. So that's, I'll put a question mark there. P2 will be equal to PB. That's given. That's the uh, two, uh, 280 kilopascals gauge. Okay, and then uh, V1 will be equal to about zero because it's the surface of a large tank. It's moving down very slowly, but the kinetic energy there is negligible. So we'll say it's about equal to zero. V2 will just be the same velocity as in the pipe. We'll call it V bar. And that, in fact, is given, right? That's, that's just going to be the volumetric flow rate divided by the cross-sectional area of the pipe. Cross-sectional area of the pipe will be pi d squared over 4. So we can plug in the numbers for that. If you do that, it'll just come out to be a 5 point... Oops, let me clean that up. It'll come out to be 5.1 meters per second when you plug in the numbers for that. All right. Z1 is pretty easy to figure out. That's given as 6 meters. And then Z2 will be 15 meters. So we'll write those down. Then we have to figure out uh, the, sh the shaft head term. Well, there are no pumps anywhere between points 1 and 2. No pumps, no turbines, nothing like that. No rotating machinery. So that term will be equal to 0. And then lastly, we have our head loss term between 1 and 2. Here we have a lot of different mechanisms causing the head loss. We'll, of course, have a major loss due to viscous effects in the pipe. The major loss coefficient will be the friction factor times L over D times the velocity in the pipe. I'm calling the velocity in the pipe just V bar. It'll be uh, the, the major loss coefficient times the velocity head uh, V bar squared over 2G. Then we have some minor losses. I'll put in a minor loss for the inlet. It's a re-entrant inlet. 
the velocity ahead there will still be v squared over 2g. We have a gate valve that's half closed. So we'll put that in there. We have a couple of elbow losses. We'll put those in there. All of these have the same velocity head. And then we're, we'll get to the exit here, and the exit loss is zero. There is no exit loss here because we're taking point two is right at the very end of the pipe. So we haven't had any losses occurring at the exit because point two is right at the end of the pipe. So there is no exit loss in this particular case. All right, so we now need to figure out what the uh, friction factor is. We know the length L that's given here is 40 meters. We know the diameter D is five centimeters. We need to find that friction factor. So there we'll go to the Moody plot. In order to find that, we need to find the Reynolds number. Now the Reynolds number, based on the pipe diameter, will be the velocity in the pipe times the diameter divided by the kinematic viscosity. We know all of these numbers. We can work this out. This comes out to be 200,000. So clearly, we're dealing with the turbulent flow. By the way, since we know that, we also know that the kinetic energy correction factor at location 2 here will be equal to 1. I'll put that as a note here. Alpha 2 is equal to 1 because it's turbulent. The relative roughness, oops, let's write that down. Relative roughness I'll be able to find as well because I'm told that we're dealing with commercial steel. So I can look up the roughness for that from a, a chart. If you go to the, the formula sheet that we use for the class, and then look up the roughness for commercial steel, what you'll find is that comes out to be 4.5 times 10 to the minus 5 meters. And of course, we know the diameter of the pipe is 5 centimeters, so that's 5 times 10 to the minus 2 meters. So the relative roughness comes out to be 9 times 10 to the minus 4. Okay, so we have our Reynolds number. We have our relative roughness. And again, just as a reminder, we got this roughness value, the epsilon, from the formula sheet looking up roughnesses for commercial steel pipe. So let's use our Moody plot to find what our, our friction factor is. So let me go switch to the Moody plot. Just give me a second here. Okay, we're told our Reynolds number is 200,000. So let's see, that's right here. 200,000. And then we're told, or we calculated our relative roughness is 9 times 10 to the minus 4. So 9 times 10 to the minus 4 puts us right about in there. So I'll just go in between those lines best I can to, to that point. And then from there, I'm going to go come straight across best I can to right there. And that looks like our, rel our friction factor is about 0.021. It's an, it's an approximate value because I'm trying to use a plot and do my best to draw straight lines and things like that. So it's 0 0.021 is what I'll use for my friction factor. So let's go back to our problem. Okay, so we used our Moody plot. to find the friction factor is 0 0.021. Okay, so it looks like I have um, pretty much all of the terms that I need to do the calculations. Oh, I, I guess some other things I need to look up. I'll need to look up the K value for a re-entrant inlet. And again, if you go to, the, go to the formula sheet, there's a table of minor loss coefficients. This one, when I looked it up, was equal to 0.8. The valve, a half open gate valve, again, finding from the formula sheet with a table of minor loss coefficients, that came out to be 2.1 when I looked it up. And 90 degree threaded elbows, looking that up, that came out to be 1.5 when I looked it up in the formula sheet. So we can go ahead and plug in all the, the values back into our extended Bernoulli equation, just kind of rearrange the equation. And ultimately what I'm trying to solve for is PA. So we can work all that out, and I'm not going to go through the algebra. I don't think that part's of much value to you. But if you work it all out, you'll get that the PA comes out to be 6.8 times 10 to the fifth Pascal's gauge. 
So that's the pressure we would need at this point in order to be able to push the fluid through this pipe at the given volumetric flow rate. Okay, hopefully all that makes sense to you. Again, it's just a, just to kind of recap, it's a matter of applying the extended Bernoulli equation from a point one to a point two, writing down everything that we know, evaluating the head loss value, um, taking into account both minor losses here as well as the major loss coefficient here. That required use of the Moody plot. And then there's just a lot of uh, bookkeeping in order to make sure that we get all the, all the numbers uh, correct. Okay, let me uh, continue with this example just a little bit further. Let's say I was going to use a different point for our loss, for our point two. So instead of point two here, let me put a different point in here. Let's, let's say I chose a point two double prime, or I'm sorry, point two prime over here. Okay, so what if I made my point two here, then, then my my uh, stream tube would eventually kind of work its way over there. What would be different if I solved the problem in that case? Well, in that case, what, what would be different is the velocity at two, two prime, actually, let me write this in blue. So this will be 0.2 prime. So in that case, the velocity at two prime would be about equal to zero because again, that's the, on the surface of this large tank. Here, the elevation at 0.2 prime would be equal to 14 meters. Okay, so that would be different as well. The head loss coefficient in this case would have all the same losses as before. It would still have our major loss, would still have these minor losses, but there would be an additional minor loss. The additional minor loss would be the, an exit loss because now that we've come out of the pipe and the water spills into this big tank here, and then it kind of mixes around and eventually comes to rest. So in that case, we would have an additional exit loss. So we would have to factor that in where the exit loss coefficient is equal to one. You could look that up in a table or just remember it. The exit loss is always one when the fluid eventually comes to rest. The other little difference here is that the V bar in these relations is this V bar. It, we would no longer have V2 is equal to that because of course we know V2 prime is here. The V bar in all of these is, is the 5.1 meters per second. Again, just remember V2 prime here is equal to, to zero. I think everything else will be the same. I already mentioned the elevation would be different. Uh, we would still have the same Reynolds number, we'd still have the same relative roughness, we'd still have the same friction factor, same pressure, everything else looks the same. And then when you solve all of this, what you'll end up getting is the same pressure at A. It, you, the problem still works out, you still get the same result. Doesn't matter where you choose that point, uh, that point two, it still comes out to be the same value ultimately. And if you wanted to, you could try even, um, well, I, you know, I think we'll just go ahead and end it there. But I just wanted to show you that you'll still get the same result if we choose point two right at the exit of the pipe or if we choose it here where the velocity eventually comes to zero. Okay, I think that uh, covers this example. We'll go ahead and end it there.